Hi, I'm Shane. I'm Kelsey. And this is Dixie, and we're Love Hut for Life. And for 197 weeks, we've been getting lost all over this country. Currently, we are hanging out in Narrows, Virginia, and Shane has a really, really cool project on his hands. We cannot wait to show you all of the updates on the Airstream for this week. If you haven't already done so, hit that thumbs up button and comment below so that we know to be grateful for you. Good morning and welcome to another week on a hillside in Virginia. We've been here for a couple weeks now and I was brought here to work on this Airstream. We're doing something a little different with it. This Airstream is not really intended to hit the road. As you can see, it's kind of flying. But it's quite old. This is a 1973 and it's had some leaks over the years and it got put in storage and those leaks really didn't get tended to. So what happens to Airstreams when leaks is the floor goes out. Now we are basically making a really cool pool house because there's a pool over there. And we're going to be gussing this thing up and fixing it up but we are not making it roadworthy. So I'm not gonna be taking the shell off to replace the flooring. I'm gonna be adding it in and pushing it back under the walls. And that will be sufficient for this. We're also sealing the outside so that all the work that we're about to put inside stays there and it doesn't have water issues. So we get all the leaks fixed outside. In the meantime, while I'm waiting on parts and waiting on work to be done on the outside, I've been asked to remodel a bathroom inside and I'll be showing you the tile work that I've been working on last week in there in just a little bit, but I think they're still asleep. I'm up before them today. Yo, hang on, this week's gonna be fun. Well, for the first time since we've been here, it rained a lot yesterday and I was kind of excited about it because that meant the camper was gonna leak. And we've gotten most of the flooring out as y'all can see. So anywhere that there's leaks happening, the water is hitting down on the pan and it's loose as well. So water was draining out. So it afforded us the opportunity to spot where it's coming from. These windows up here were definitely a big issue. They're leaking on the outside of it. They're leaking on the inside of it. So I've got to work on getting those sealed up. Those are my biggest ones. The, the, the lights, the running lights are leaking as well from what I can tell. I thought I had caught all of the wood rot, but there was one little spot here that I thought I was gonna use wood hardener on and just save this area, but we noticed a lot of water coming down here because this window is leaking into the wall, coming out and then leaking underneath this seam. And you can see the water line and it's been hitting this one spot. So I cut it out this morning and then there's some gross stuff living down in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and surgically remove all of it. And then we can start cutting all the pieces to fill in these gaps. What you doing up there, Wendy? Kelsey, I'm having the best day ever. Shane has taught me how to remove rivets. So I have this top cover off, this top cover off, I removed the antenna and the cable system off the top. Now I'm scraping all of this gooey, gooey caulk that I put up there before I met people like Shane and knew that was the wrong product to use. So now, whichever one works the easiest is what I use. And I have this much more to go. I gotta get busy. But I'm having the best day ever. Awesome. That's one hell of a lady, y'all. Let's go see what Shane's doing. How did I look? together a sub floor. I wish I had the energy that lady has. Good grief. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's coming along, y'all. What 
I've spent a lot of time back here in the back patching in the floor. I haven't actually put in my patches yet because I'm waiting for the outside to get sealed. I don't want a, a rainstorm to sneak up on me and all my hard work get ruined. But I've done as much back there as I can and it's time to move on to something else. This is the stove that was in here and they conveniently packed everything you need to access underneath the stove. I don't know if that's easy access or not, but it wasn't too hard to get out. Now, what we have here is, it looks like at some point, someone has added a battery charger and they just straight wired it in. And that got straight wired into the breaker for the, the 30 amp connection. And then this is supposed to be a battery charger, but I'm assuming it stopped functioning properly at some point. It apparently is still running its 12 volt board because it has a little distribution block for your 12 volt circuit. And we don't quite use this type of stuff anymore. And I don't really feel comfortable leaving it here either. So what I'm gonna be doing is taking out all this excessive stuff and I'm replacing it with two little boxes. One's gonna be a fuse panel that takes blade fuses. And the other one is going to be a power converter so all it's going to do is it's going to plug into a normal 110 connection versus a 30 amp connection and it is just going to power the 12 volt things that's in here the camper itself is also going to be energized so it, it does have 110 power so that you can plug in things into an outlet up there but we're going to do all this without running a 30 amp circuit because the air conditioning is not needed and there's just no reason to have a 30 amp circuit in this camper without that air conditioner. Let's see if I can make heads or tails of this. It appears there's a fresh water tank underneath my feet too. I've been wondering where it was. Found it. So is this in my camper or <laughs> did you do that? No ma'am, that was some creative electrician along the way. This thing wow. broke because this was supposed to charge your battery and it quit working so in the 12 volt side was still working. So instead of removing it, they just hung this by a hook. And behind the stove is my favorite part. It's been swinging around behind your stove for all these years. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's all going bye bye though, don't worry. Don't worry. Wendy. Oh, this is gonna be wonderful. Well, I think the sun is setting on this project for today. I've got to get up here on this ladder. And I'll show you guys what Wendy's been working on. We're calling this her hanging out with young Wendy. So she's had this camper for a long time, since her early 20s. And at some point along the way, she added caulk to all the seams. So she's been up there scraping away at it today and got a couple things removed off of the roof which is awesome but we're gonna have some rain tonight so I want to make sure we get these lids covered up so no rain comes dumping inside the camper and then I'm gonna go find Kelsey I bet she spent all day in that pool good morning everyone and welcome to my chaos I spent a lot of time in here yesterday and I'm gonna spend as much time in here today as I can, but eventually it's gonna rain and I won't be able to work. So in the meantime, I am working on removing a lot of the old systems that's in here. We're really not using them here in place and we do need power to run through the camper. So I'm removing all of that. We're simplifying the plumbing system, so this super old school water pump is going to be coming out. The holding tank that's under my feet is probably really disgusting, and we're not going to use it either, so I'm going to cap it off and just clean up this area. I'll be adding in a, a new age blade style 12 volt uh, fuse block versus the old fuse block is inside of this thing. I don't like that, and this thing's going away anyway, so... It's all gotta be rewired. Let's tear it apart first. Well, I've been waiting all the morning for this to happen and 
There's the rain. Wendy was working up top and she got several of these windows finished up and I was about to start sealing them. I got that one applied before the rain started and we'll see how it holds. The rest of these, like this one, if you could see, there's a beautiful layer of duct tape and I tried to seal around them to prevent water from coming in so that I don't have so much to mitigate when all this rain stops. But it's supposed to go on for a few hours. I guess I'm gonna go find my banjo. Just like that, the rain's gone. Now I'm back out here surveying the damage around these windows. The duct tape worked very well during our little rainstorm. We got almost no water inside, which means I've found about most of the places that are leaking. I'm gonna go ahead and seal this upper window here. And what I'm using is Quad Max. And this is for flashing, metal flashing. So I'm using it to go around the seams as well as around the inside of the window. It's not necessarily the absolute correct way. The correct way would be to remove the frame and replace the window, but we're just not trying to invest that much time into this project. So we're gonna be using outdoor rated sealant and then with proper maintenance, one can remove it and add a new layer in a couple of years when this goes out. Let's get this thing all sealed up. Hello. What are y'all doing down there? Hi, Kelsey. I'm learning. We're trying to waterproof a big steel too. It's going okay. I have no doubt that you two will figure it out. You guys are quite the team. I agree. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to another fun-filled day on a Virginia mountainside. This morning I came out and checked all of this. I'm not sure if I explained it last night, but I'll explain it again. This crevice here is a direct exposure to the subfloor. There was wood sitting along this track here on the inside of the skin. And there's also, the way they built it, all that was shielding this from water intrusion was a crappy little caulk bead that didn't actually do anything. And as you can see, it was quite a large crack. On this side, they achieved their goal and got flushed with the metal, but I guess whoever was cutting metal that day didn't really care too much. That and this back panel had lost all of its rivets. And if this is removed, you could stick your hand inside the camper because this is the skin of the underbelly. So I got all this sealed up and I think that was a huge source of water damage in the bedroom. Now on to the next puzzle of the day is I gotta get this piece of trim off and it's underneath the arm for the awning. So we're gonna open the awning for the first time ever. I'm sure it's not dry rotted. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are still hard at work over here, but uh... I don't think they're gonna be for much longer. These guys are not looking pretty and uh, apparently we're under tornado watch. I didn't even know that happened up here. Good thing we got this brick house to hide it if we need to. That one's solid. <laughs> Good or bad? Bad. Still pretty, but that's a thunder egg. We are hoping right. that these are a little less solid and uh, more more significant geos. Guys, all of these that we're showing you here came from Iowa. And if you want to find your own, then go back. Good 
Good morning, y'all. I wanted to talk to you for a minute about this saw that we were using last night. So I got a hold of this little towel saw to do this towel job in this bathroom because I really didn't need an expensive one. This is one from Harbor Freight. And it does okay cutting towel. You have to be patient. And it only has a little water pan on the bottom. But last night when we were cutting those geodes, it had the original blade on it. We've updated the blade. But this thing just doesn't quite have the power to cut through those geodes, which in turn was making me push harder than I wanted to, which meant I was endangering my hands. And I just am not in a position to lose any fingers. So we're going to wait and cut more of those geodes later. But I'm going to spend my day cutting tile on this puppy so I can get that shower looking pretty. Y'all hang on, I'm going to get muddy. Alright, so I've been down on my hands and knees trying to get everything laid out for the shower pan. I'm using River Rocks, which is cool. Me and Kelsey spent a lot of time looking for River Rocks and I like what's been replicated in here. Nothing was taken from nature making this. All this is ceramic. But I've got everything laid out and I'll lay down my mortar and set all this and then fill in all the little gaps with this big pile of scrap rocks that I have here. Boy, this is gonna look pretty. Well, I was moving some of my supplies around and I made a new mountain friend. I don't know what he's called. I bet one of you do. I know he's not dangerous though. He's kind of cute. Yeah, come here and pick him up and hold him. Not that cute. Give him some smooches. No. No, no, no. All right, little dude, you gotta get out of my way. I need in there. All right, let's see the fruits of my labor. I gotta remember which ones to step on. There's some wet ones in there. I really like how this turned out. These stones are really gonna pop once they get floated and then I do a ceiling over the top of them. Also got this super cool trim around the bottom which is gonna make this room a true wet room after I get this backsplash of tile up. And that way you can hose off in every direction. Don't mess up my towel. I'm not messing up your towel. I'm in here to admire your towel work. Mm -hmm. Chill out. Mm -hmm. You did do a very good job. It's Thanks. Great. A lot of effort went into this, you know. <laughs> so a lot of times when we park, getting to the grocery store is a very time consuming thing, but now with Instacart and People delivering. We had a whole pile of food brought to us. Look at Dixie, she's so happy. <laughs> I may have underestimated how much one pound of serrano peppers is though. Yeah, that's a lot of peppers. And one pound of jalapenos. <laughs> You're gonna make some hot sauce, huh? <laughs> at least lots of tacos. Salsa. <laughs> Good morning, all of you beautiful people. I am back in my bathroom working. I'm starting out my day cleaning out all the little grooves. There's a couple places where the mortar squeezed up a little too far for my liking. So when I go to float it, that's going to stick through. So I've got me a handy dandy pick and I'm going away. As soon as I get done with this, I'm going to start hanging this towel up on this wall though. And Wendy's out there working on the camper because we got a big storm coming tomorrow so we got to make sure that thing is watertight it's gonna be a dusty day y'all strings I hope the rain quits I need to work the other things not the strings I'm happy this is here though morning everyone I'm already in this little bathroom of sweating up a storm but I'm moving the tile further up the wall today yesterday I kind of quit abruptly I ran out of steam but today I got a lot of steam let's see how much we can get done Well, puppy, 
Katie, it looks like we're ending our day just like we started it. With Shane playing his banjo. Why would I do anything but play this banjo? I'm sure enjoying it. Happy Friday, y'all. And welcome to another day of standing in a bathroom corner. Yesterday, I managed to get quite a bit of the tile up and we decided we had enough extra of these little rocks that we're gonna make a nice accent all the way around. So I'm working on hanging that this morning and hopefully we'll make it to the top. We shall see. Hey, hey, it got quiet in here. Yeah. Ooh, pretty. Almost got finished. But as luck would have it, I ran out of mortar when I have just this little niche to finish. So, unfortunately, you're gonna have to come back and see it next week because we got somewhere to be this weekend. That's right, we do. I already have the Love Hut all packed up and ready to go. You do? I do. Well, thank you, ma'am. Let's go find some friends. Nice work, babe. Back to familiar places, y'all. We're always so happy to be here. That spot just doesn't look right without a big yellow house in it. Guys, we want to take the time to say thank you to each and every one of you who have followed us along on this video so far and any of the other hundreds of videos before this. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button, thumbs up, and comment below so that we know that we should be grateful for you. If you're looking for some sweet Love, Hurt, Love Hut merch <laughs> or some of Kelsey's wire wrap jewelry, head over to our Etsy page and check that out. Or you can check out some of our other social media like Facebook and Instagram and you can send us a direct message there or through an email at lovehutforlife at gmail.com. Guys, we will see you next week with a whole lot more updates on this Airstream and all of these other projects that Shane has going. Peace out, guys. Have a good one. Bye, y'all.